Chapter 11 discusses customer relationship management. In Chapter 11, Part 2, we discuss the following items. Analyzing customer data and identifying target customers. For the second step, we need to convert the customer data we collected in Step 1 into valuable information that will help retailers create programs to increase customer loyalty and repeat business. We do this by analyzing the customer data in our database to determine two things, who our best customers are and how we can target them to improve loyalty and repeat business. There are two ways to identify a retailer's most valuable customers. The first is by calculating the Customer Lifetime Value, CLV, which is the expected contribution a customer will make to the retailer's profits over their entire relationship with the retailer. To avoid confusion, we define the lifetime as the entire relationship a customer has with the retailer, not the customer's entire lifespan. Let's look at an example. If we take our case study of Starbucks, the customer lifetime value represents how much a customer contributes to Starbucks profits over their entire duration of their relationship with Starbucks. To see an example of customer lifetime value for Starbucks, we can click on the image provided. We can determine customer expenditures per visit and number of visits per week. For our five customers, the average expenditure is $5.90 per visit and 4.2 visits per week. This gives us an average customer value per week of $24.30, which is the amount spent multiplied by the number of weekly visits. To estimate the customer lifetime value, we can use a simple method, which assumes a 20-year relationship with Starbucks. For our five customers, this results in an estimated spending of $25,272 over their entire relationship with Starbucks. Keep in mind that this is a simple estimation and there are other methods to calculate CLV. Starbucks can use the CLV to focus their efforts on their most profitable customers. For example, if one customer is estimated to spend $25,000 over their relationship with Starbucks, and another is estimated to spend only $5,000, Starbucks should focus on the former to increase their loyalty and repeat business. Let's talk about another type of analysis called RFM analysis. While the previous analysis we discussed was about calculating customer lifetime value, RFM analysis is used to determine customer segments that a retailer should target. This method is mostly used for catalogs and internet channels. In RFM analysis, we evaluate the potential contribution of each customer segment by looking at three factors, recency, frequency, and monetary. So what do these factors mean in the RFM analysis? R stands for how recently a customer made a purchase, F stands for how frequently they make purchases, and M stands for how much money they spend in our store. By analyzing these factors, we can identify the most profitable customers to target. I created a little chart to demonstrate how the RFM analysis can be used to determine which customer is more profitable for a retailer. Let's take a look at Bob and Fred, two customers of our hypothetical retailer. Bob spends $10 in January, $5 in February, $15 in March, and continues to spend money every month thereafter, while Fred spends $60 in January and nothing in the following months. When we add up the total amount spent by each customer over a six-month period, 
we find that Bob spent a total of $55, while Fred has spent a total of $60. So which customer is more profitable? At first glance, you might think that Fred is more profitable because he spent more money overall. However, when we apply RFM analysis, we can see that Bob is the more profitable customer. Why? Because he makes purchases more frequently than Fred and spends money every month, while Fred only made purchases one in the sixth month period and spent nothing in the remaining months. We also need to consider the recency factor. How recently did each customer make a purchase? Bob made his last purchase in June, while Fred made his last purchase in January. Finally, we look at the monetary value of each purchase. While Fred spent more money per purchase than Bob in January, Bob spent more in the following months. Also, what I didn't tell you before this is that Fred went into the store to buy a gift for his employees. He knew that there were going to be several birthdays over the year and some work anniversaries. So he went into the store and bought several items to use as gifts. Fred unfortunately has a limited budget because he's using that work budget, so there's no way he's going to be able to spend more because he's only going to come in once or twice a year and spend at a maximum $120. Bob spends money every month, which has the potential to increase each visit. So, in this example, Bob is our more profitable customer. In addition to analyzing customer lifetime value and recency frequency monetary metrics, we can also use retail analytics to better understand our customer data. Retail analytics involves applying statistical techniques and models to make informed retail decisions based on customer data. But don't worry, you don't need to conduct these techniques and models yourself. We'll go over a few examples so you can understand the concepts and their applications in retail. One statistical technique that we use is the market basket analysis. This involves analyzing which products are purchased together during a single shopping trip to determine which items are frequently bought together. By conducting this analysis, we can suggest where to place merchandise in the store and which products to promote together. For example, if we find that bananas and cereal are frequently purchased together, we may hang bananas in the cereal aisle to increase the likelihood of customers purchasing both items. If we find that people purchase tissues and cold medicine together, we may place travel-sized tissues on the medicine aisle. The purpose of the market basket analysis is to identify which items are often purchased together even if they wouldn't traditionally be located near each other in the store. By placing these items near each other, retailers can increase the chances of customers purchasing both items and reduce the likelihood of customers forgetting to buy an item on their shopping list. A second analysis is a technique called targeting promotions. This involves looking at what items are commonly purchased together using the information from the market basket analysis and then offering a promotion on only one of those items. In targeting promotions, retailers offer a promotion on one of the items that would usually be purchased together, but not on both. By offering a discount on one item, retailers can encourage you to buy the other item even if you don't need it now. Retailers often focus on items that are usually bought together, such as shampoo and conditioner. Even though you may not need both items at the same time, you may feel compelled to buy them together, which can lead to unplanned purchases. For example, imagine you go to the store with the intention of buying shampoo. 
you see that it's full price, but the conditioner next to it is 50% off. You may end up buying the conditioner even if you don't need it now. This is because you can use logic and reasoning to process the concept of unplanned purchasing. You may think that you don't need conditioner now, but at some point in the future, you will run out and need more. When that time comes, the conditioner may not be on sale, so it's better to buy it now at a discounted price and save it for later. Another example is when you're buying laundry detergent and you don't need fabric softener, or when you're buying dish soap for hand washing and don't need dish tabs for your dishwasher. washer. Again, if these items are on sale, you may go ahead and buy them even if you don't need them right away. Assortment planning is the final component of our retail analytics. Retailers use the insights from the market basket and targeting promotions analyses, as well as customer data collected in step one to determine the products they should carry. By analyzing the products purchased by their most valuable customers, retailers can ensure these items are always available in store. For example, a customer who regularly purchases sweet corn, ranch dressing, or bacon flavored soda might be rare. But if they are one of Kroger's most valued customers, the store needs to stock these items. If Kroger fails to stock these products, their loyal customers may switch to a competitor that carries them along with their other groceries. This concludes Chapter 11, Part 2. Please return soon for Chapter 11, Part 3.